looking to pull off another stunning victory against a Pac-10 team. The Seattle University Red Hawks have made their way to Bank of America Arena, looking to knock off the Washington Huskies, who are certainly happy to be back home after the disappointing trip this past weekend into Los Angeles. And the Huskies looking for their 13th win of the season as the Red Hawks try to move within a game of 500. Lorenzo Romar in his eighth season as head coach of the Washington Huskies facing one of his former assistants in Cameron Dollar. They go way back to when Romar recruited Cameron out of high school to play point at UCLA. Along with Francis Williams, I'm Tom Glasgow. Nice to have you with us. We look forward to this contest. Washington again playing without one of its key weapons in Isaiah Thomas. So it will be interesting, but that coaching matchup certainly is the primary storyline. Yeah, without question. I mean, these two guys, as you just mentioned, they go way back and they know each other very well. And you'll see two teams that actually mirror each other in style because of the, uh, you know, the commonality that these guys have with their coaching. He came oh so close to being a Washington Husky, but Chuck Garcia is the leader of Seattle University. The Red Hawks leading scorer at more than 20 per game, a special talent. He is a special talent, really was the surprise player in the country the first six weeks of the season. Kind of leveled off a little bit as people have got him on his scouting reports, but his talent remains the same. 20 points, nine rebounds a game, gets to the free throw line about 12 times a game. And as you mentioned, a very special talent with a very bright future. Of course, Quincy Pondexter, when you talk about special, may have his hands, but we'll see how the matchup is tonight. Will Quincy get a shot at number 22? As you can see, the Red Hawks wearing throwback uniforms to the late 1950s. Quincy Pondexter had a rough outing his last time out. Francis just two points in that loss at USC. But if we know anything about this young man, he is resilient and he's very capable of bouncing back in a very big way. Well, I think he will respond tonight. I mean, one for 10 on Sunday, or Saturday against USC. And I really think he just had a hangover from that last second loss at UCLA. But he's had a great season, three-time Pac-10 Player of the Week, one of the leading candidates for Pac-10 Player of the Year. And it's up to him to lead this Husky team because he's the lone senior and they look to him to lead the way. Now Francis, he's interesting because one of the things I like about him is he doesn't force the issue. He really wants to get his teammates involved, but that can be a fine line. There are times when you want him to take that ball, demand that ball, and put that team on his back. Well, there's a balance that you're looking for there, as you mentioned. And there have been times this season where he has done that. He tried to do that Saturday night. He was not able to do it. So the balance that they're looking for, we've talked about a third score, but uh, again, an opportunity in this game to get some of that fixed. Both of these teams have shown inconsistency throughout the season, but over the next 40 minutes tonight, they will do everything they can to get back on top. Benoit Overton with that harassing defense on Cervante Burrell over to Garcia. 
Guarded by another 22 and Justin Holliday. I see at 6'9". Can handle the ball as well as many point guards in the nation. Mike Boxley with the pass to Burrell. A little strong on the shot and the rebound by Pondexter. And Quincy on the push. Ball deflected and the steal by Seattle U. Bounce pass by Gilmore deflecting out of bounds and it'll be Seattle University basketball. Pondex will gain a little, little confidence here getting the ball against his own right there at the, at the free throw line and knocks down that shot. He didn't get a, a clean look like that at the basket the entire 40 minutes on Saturday night. So that's a, make him feel a little bit better. And Francis not a surprise that Seattle U comes out in his own the way the Huskies struggled against that in L.A. No, not, not at all. They don't have the, the athletes to try to play them man for man. And if you've watched the Huskies play, they've struggled against his own all season long. Aaron Broussard, number four, with the miss inside. Garcia launching. Gaddy with the rebound. Fast break for the Huskies. And Overton with the finish. Nice pass by Pondexter and an early 4 nothing lead. And an early timeout by Cameron Dollar, who wants to make sure that the Huskies don't build early momentum here in this matchup. And the long shot leads to the long rebound. The good thing about that play was Abdul Gaddy passed the basketball ahead. I think that's something that they need to look for when they have those opportunities. So a nice job by Gaddy to pass it ahead to keep the fast break moving. And a good job by Pondexter to find over to. Seattle University starting slowly from the floor, missing its first four shots. The Huskies have made their first two. And that's one of the reasons that Cameron Dollar was prompted to take the early timeout. Try to keep this Husky crowd out of it a little bit early on. Early on. And obviously, when you have uh, these campuses just four miles apart, you're going to have a good contingent from Seattle University cheering on the Red Hawks tonight. That just adds to the electricity here in the building. Yeah, there, there may not be two campuses in the country that are as close to each other as these two schools are. I mean, they're four or five miles at the most. 25th meeting between the two teams. Huskies with an all-time lead in the series of 20 to 4. Burrell in trouble, stripped by Gaddy. That duel hunts the other way, draws contact, and he will head to the line. Cervante Burrell with his first personal foul. So Washington, as they do here in this building, they turn up the defensive intensity, keep Burrell out of the lane, create the turnover, and Abdul Gaddy with a chance for the breakaway layup. Gaddy, the 6'3 freshman, McDonald's All-American out of Bellarmine Prep in Tacoma. Shoots nearly 54% at the line. We started to see Francis, his game develop over recent weeks, becoming a more confident player. Well, he's 18 today. Yeah. So Youngest the, player the, expectations, the expectations <laughs> just go way up now. He's, he's officially he's a 18. man. He's a grown man now. Went out of two at the line, 5 nothing. Husky lead. Garcia, you can see the ability off the dribble with that size to go to the rack. Yeah, he has he has a, a unique skill set for a guy his size, and sometimes he does have a tendency to be on the perimeter a little bit too much, but he is skilled to the point that he can play out there. I mean, we've seen him get the ball off, on the, off the, get a rebound, take it on the break himself, pull up for a jumper or make the right decision or finish at the rim. Uh, he definitely is a talented young man. That spends a lot of time at the free throw line, taking more free throws in the country than anybody by far. So what is your favorite Northwest rivalry? Well, a fan poll's question so far, it is a landslide in favor of the Cougars and the Huskies, 61%. The problem with Garcia at the foul line, he doesn't take advantage of all those opportunities. He's He's solid, but he can certainly improve, hitting just 60% at the strike. Right, yeah, he's uh, he's had a problem at the foul line all season long, and he shot 50-plus more free throws than the closest guy to him in the country. Alley-oop! Holiday with a flush from Gaddy. Perfectly executed play by the Huskies, who jumped out to a 7-0 lead. Burrell inside draws contact, can't finish. And the foul will go against one of the Huskies inside. Tyrese Rashears, the redshirt freshman out of Los Angeles. Pretty play on that lob by Gaddy, an excellent pass. Well, a play that they typically run for Quincy Pondexter. They bring Pondexter to the high post and let Holiday slide behind the zone for the, the alley-oop pass. Substitute.
substitution for the Huskies as Brashears checks out. Matthew Bryan Amity checking in. Well guarded by Gaddy. Gets by and pull up over Pondexter and the Red Hawks still shut out here at Bank of America. Gaddy pushing the front court. Trailing on to play, Pondexter the open up for three. And that's just poor defense really by Seattle University, not to know where Quincy Pondexter yeah, is. You have to know where he is and, and understand that when he gets the ball, he's gonna, he's gonna pull the trigger. 10-0 Huskies, Pondexter with five points. Loose ball, Overton, and in transition, here come the Huskies, and there goes Pondexter. Seven points for Quincy Pondexter. And another Seattle University timeout with the dogs off and running to a 12-0 lead. Boy, talk about two different teams, the Washington Huskies at home versus the Washington Huskies on the road. It is night and day. And Quincy Pondexter, who had just two points in the last game, at USC is on fire early in this one. Well, that's paying attention to detail or not paying attention to detail. As you know that in the scouting report, Coach Dollar let them know that you have to know where he is at all times. But the opportunity to get out on the break and, and get the slam dunk just adds to the confidence that he got earlier from the free throw line jump shot. Then he knocked down the three. And right now, after he set a two-point performance on Saturday night, he jumps out here with a quick seven. Three for three from the floor. The Huskies five for five as a team. And you can see Quincy, streaky Quincy at Arizona and ASU had a rough go, but at home he was lights out and, and one for 10 against the Trojans on Saturday. In the Stanford and Cal game, he actually had a good game. The, the first road game in UCLA, he, yeah. had, he had a nice game statistically, but uh, he has had his struggles on the road. Number 21, Chris Ruff with the ball. He's checked in to the lineup. Same story for number 12, Taylor Olson for the Red Hawks. Garrett Lever losing the basketball, so significant substitutions. Cameron Dollar and a foul in that court. I thought that might go against Seattle U. In fact, it'll go against Washington. Well, Seattle U brings Lever in to uh, replace Burrell, who was not handling the job at the point. Chris Gweb comes in, who's really a six starter on this team. He starts in, comes off the bench, one of their leading scorers. And Taylor Olson, a senior out of Blanchett High School, he's a senior. Give him an opportunity to play in this atmosphere. And Gweb going up strong right there, second leading scorer on the team at just over 12 per game. But the Red Hawks still cannot put the ball in the hoop. And the foul. Going against Seattle University, third team foul. Alex Jones, who's checked in, picking up that foul. So with the exception of number 44, Mike Boxley, all reserves on the court right now for Cameron Dollar. He's looking to build on their 12-0 lead. Scott Suggs with the ball, getting in for his first action. And you wouldn't expect Seattle U to come in and be overwhelmed by the by this crowd, but but obviously they were at the very beginning, and then the Husky defense had a lot to do with it. Well, as he was building there, defense can just be suffocating at times. Daddy for two, no good. Nice block out by Boxley as he goes to Garrett Lever. Worth trailing on the play. Nice fake. Pull up from about eight feet. Strong. Overton with the rebound. Out to Suggs. Numbers for the Huskies. Open three, second made three-pointer this season for Abdul Gaddy, who came in connecting on just one of 16 from beyond the arc. So a good early indicator and an offensive foul. Looks like that goes against Alex Jones picking up the foul. That is four. A perfect start for the Washington Huskies off to a 15 to nothing lead on their crosstown rivals. Well, I think I finally got it figured out. You know, they're wearing the numbers of some Seattle U greats to honor the history there. And Coach Cameron Dollar said when he told the team about them that their draws hit the floor, they were awestruck and so honored to be able to do that. No history lesson needed, by the way. They know everything because most of these guys are at practice, guys. All right, Jen. Well, we had an early 
question answered regarding the absence of Isaiah Thomas and how the Huskies would respond as time goes for his trip, going the other way and drawing contact. Cervante Burrell, and he will head to the line. 15-0 and lead to start this game. As you look at the numbers being worn here tonight by the current Seattle U players honoring these legends of the past and some great names on there. One of my favorites, Rod Durline, the rifle, who went on to play uh, for the Supersonics uh, and the list goes on. A very rich history and of course for Seattle University, their first season playing a full Division I schedule since 1980. So they are back in the big time and trying to build something special again. Yeah, they really are. And some of those guys are here in the building tonight. I know I saw Carl Irvin earlier. Uh, he's sitting first side with Kevin Suter. His name's not on that list. Their teammates back in the late 70s or uh, early 80s. But a lot of those guys are, are here in the building. Now. Austin Turner for a three. And 18 to nothing. Husky Lee. There's a tradition here at Bank of America Arena. The fans stay on their feet until the opponent score. And now they can sit down as Burrell gets to the rack. Seattle University has first two points tonight. Five and a half minutes before they get their first bucket. And uh, to give Washington's defense credit for that, but uh, Seattle U a little overwhelmed also with this environment. Ron Dexter cleaning up the mess off the Overton miss. And what a fast start for Quincy Ron Dexter already. Nine points and four rebounds and a 20 to two Washington lead. Points. 
And a blocking foul that Husky fans are buying, but that's the call. That will go against Holiday. Well, you see against this against this zone, one thing Washington is doing a really good job of tonight. That's the same spot that Gaddy got the three from earlier. Just good ball movement of, sw of swinging the ball from, from side to side and making the defense defend it instead of just getting the ball on one side of the floor or taking the first quick available shot. And they've really done a nice job here early of working against the zone, which benefits them because they're going to see and have seen a lot of zone to this point in the season, and they need to work against it. Take a look at those first 16 possessions for Seattle University. It has been an incredible struggle for the Red Hawks. Benoit Overton checking out, Gaddy returning. Peter Harris, number 24, has checked in for Seattle University as Lever takes a seat on the bench. Dussard to inbound. 23 to two, the Huskies in front. And Olsen not on the same page that time with Gavin Gilmore. And he could have taken one dribble to the baseline, Olsen, and given himself a better angle to make that entry pass to the post. Seven turnovers against the Red Hawks. Suggs, no good. Brashears follow, no good. Garcia fouled by Brashears. Second foul on Brashears. That is the sixth team foul against the Huskies. Both teams now with 16 fouls. Darnell Gant checking in for the Huskies. And it's Holiday checking out. A little confusion. Brashears thought he was headed to the bench, but he'll remain in the game as Darnell Gant gets to see his first action. That'll be the seventh team foul against the Huskies, the first against Gant. With a timeout taken, we come back. Charles Garcia back at the line. And wow, what a start for the Huskies and that man, Quincy Pondexter. The dogs up by 21. Welcome back to the Bank of America Arena. The Huskies out to a 23-2 lead against Seattle University. One of the big storylines in this game is Coach Cameron Dollar facing his former mentor in Lorenzo Romark. They coached together here at the UW for seven years and three years prior to that at St. Louis. So these guys have been joined at the hip for the last 10 years, which Lorenzo Romark said earlier in this week does give Cameron some kind of an advantage when it comes to personnel because he knows Coach Lorenzo Romark so well at the same time coach says it's going to be fun to see Cameron in a head coaching position for the first time because he's wanted this since he was four guys all right Jen Charles Garcia at the line looking for his first point tonight he's wanted to be a head coach since he was four <laughs> really I'm telling you that's you know usually here's how it works Usually you want to be that star athlete first, and then when that time runs out, then you start thinking about coaching. But he knew coaching, still went on to be a tremendous athlete, obviously. That's a good one. I'm Cameron Dollar, and I want to be a college head coach, <laughs> and I'm four. <laughs> he obviously had a pretty good idea where salaries would be in the future. Yeah. Well, his dad was a coach, so he was following in his dad's footsteps. Turner in the corner, three more for the Huskies. 26 to three, Washington in front. Zelston Turner has made both three point shots he's attempted. Total domination by the Huskies. Garcia, nice smooth stroke but can't connect. Sugg saves the ball from going out of bounds. Tied up by Broussard, alternating possession. We'll give the ball to Washington. There's an example for Scott Suggs. He's got to get in the weight room. He didn't have the strength to yeah. pull that ball away from Bassard to prevent that tie-up, even though Washington's going to keep possession of the ball. But uh, they, they'll be able to use that to let him know. And, and not saying that he hasn't, but he needs to continue to get in there because he's kind of slight. Abdul Gaddy, Elston Turner, Scott Suggs, Matthew Bryan, Adam, Quincy Pondex are on the floor for the Huskies. 
find by Gaddy. Pondexter for three more. And he's into double figures now with 12 points. And the Husky lead at 29 to three. And a steal in transition. Gaddy blocked by Burrell. And the foul called is Abdul Gaddy will head to the line. Well, another, really? another turnover there by Washington with the quick hands by Abdul Gaddy. But Gaddy's, Gaddy's able to get into the teeth of the zone. Find Pondexter on the wing from that same spot again where they've been knocking down shots over in that left, left side of the floor all night. All right, here's, here's the toughest question I'm probably going to have for you tonight. Why can this team play this way at home and they can't play anything really close to it on the road? Well, two things are going on here tonight. Uh, unfortunately, an inferior opponent. And uh, number two, they, they always just feed off the energy that this crowd and this atmosphere brings. And that's the growth that they're going to have to find the ways to have the focus, the concentration, the attention to detail, the energy and the effort that you have to have to win on the road. And they haven't been able to find that. And I think it's all a part of the maturation process that this team has to go through only having one senior. Now look at those numbers, and they're really dramatic. The Huskies at home win by an average, outscore their opponents by an average of 16 points, but on the road, they're outscored by nearly 13. I mean, you're talking about a 29-point differential. Turnover by Gaddy and members for Seattle U. Burrell with the lay-in. Seattle U gets a jailbreak, fast break. They're able to convert, cut it to 25. From, but from the Washington perspective, I mean, it's great that they're knocking down shots and, and it's going to allow them to build some confidence. But this is the way they shot the ball in the first half against UCLA. And what I was just getting ready to say, I still need to see that ball go inside yeah. because they cannot live and die by these outside shots that are going down right now because they shot the ball well against UCLA in the first half. They scored 41 points. In the second half, they only scored 20 because those jump shots in the first half, that's fool's goal. And the ball has to go inside from time to time to keep the defense honest and to continue to try to establish a low post presence. It's going to be interesting to see if Lorenzo Romar, uh, with this game where it is, his club up by 25, is, is going to insist that we get that ball into the paint and let's get those bigs involved and get some rhythm going with them. So when the Cougars roll in here on Saturday, they're feeling good about their game. Yeah, because it won't be this easy against the Cougars. And let's just say because of the home court advantage, they come in and they play a great game because they are at home, which they've typically done. But they still got to prepare for the trip they still have to make to the Bay Area and the trip they have to make to the Oregons. Offensive foul against Chuck Garcia. Another turnover for Seattle University. That's 10. Huskies with four. And the Dogs up by 27 points. As we're inside the 10-minute mark here in the first half of Bank of America Arena. Started the game and remains in the 2 3 zone. Nice find inside by Pondexter. Ryan Ammoning unable to finish. He's come up with a loose ball. Holiday. Athleticism followed by Pondexter. Pussy comes up with the ball and called for the charge. Into Taylor Olson. Saw some nice work inside by the Huskies, getting second and third opportunities, even though they couldn't finish it off. Like the ball movement, but the pass from Pondexter to Brian Emney, he's got to take that ball to the basket strong. He doesn't need to bring that to the other side. Go ahead and absorb the contact and take the foul and try to play through it and then go to the line. But coming to the other side with the reverse, not necessary. You've got to have, when you have opportunities to get fouled, go ahead and get fouled. Don't avoid the foul. And that's kind of been his problem all season long. Well, Taylor Olson. There's a matchup we've been looking for with Pondex to Garden Garcia. And a timeout taken by Cameron Dollar with exactly nine minutes left here in the first half. Cervante Burrell with four points, and the rest of the Red Hawk team obviously with just one, and that one point provided by Chuck Garcia. Get a look at him. We talked uh, off the top. Plenty of NBA scouts expected here tonight. He has been followed closely. And if you're at home, they say, well, you know, what are they looking for out of him right now with his team down by 27 points? Are they looking at attitude?
attitude? Are they looking to see if he tries to take this thing over? Are they looking to see if he stays within the team concept? My guess is it's all of the above. All of that, all of that. And you have to understand when you, when you have a guy like that, I kind of compared maybe to Rodney Stuckey when he was at Eastern Washington. He was at Eastern. They didn't have a lot of success. They didn't win. Well, how come they're not winning if he's so good? But you have to look at a guy like that and think about, okay, if we put him on the floor with four other guys that are as good as him or maybe better, then how good is it going to make him? So though, that's another factor that you have to look at when you have a guy playing in a situation like this. It's just not all about what he does tonight. And, you know, we talked about that 51-point win the Red Hawks had at Oregon State. Charles Garcia was a non-factor in that game right. due to foul trouble. I mean, it was really the rest of his teammates that dismantled the Beavers that night. Botchley with the point, with the bucket. Red Hawks got the turnover. Looking for more, and that time it was Taylor Olson going too deep on his penetration, drawing the offensive foul. And that's not what Taylor Olson does. He'd have been better served. Good shot fake going to the basket, but he had Boxley spotted up in the corner. He could have passed it to Boxley and let him knock that down. First foul on Olson. Ten team fouls against the Red Hawks. Returning to the Seattle University lineup, Gavin Gilmore, number 31. On next round, high. This just one shot. Holiday coming up short. Burrell with a rebound for Seattle U. Good ball Wide open in the Seattle quarter. U. Yeah, Lever with the open look. No good. Rebound. Three on two break. The alley is Holiday. Wow, what a finish. Not a perfect pass from Overton, but it doesn't matter when you have athleticism like that. Terrific play by Holiday. Yeah, and as you said, the superior athleticism, Holiday at 6'5, 6'6. Burrell back on defense for Seattle U at maybe 5'9. No chance. Seven points for Holiday at 34 to 7. Washington Lee. It has been all Huskies. Overton. It's nice to be long on a play like that, isn't it? Justin Holiday with a pretty play. And the Dogs with some gorgeous basketball here tonight. 7.38 left in the first half at Edmondson Pavilion. A game dominated by the Washington Huskies. The first matchup between Lorenzo Romar and Cameron Dollar since Dollar left this Husky coaching staff last spring. However, the second time they have gone head-to-head -head as coaches, back in the late 90s, 99-98 season, Lorenzo Romar, head coach at Pepperdine. Cameron Dollar, at age 22, the head coach at Southern California College. Pepperdine winning that game, 94 to 64. Well, Cameron was So this there. one's not going yeah. too well either, yeah, is my yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> It's a repeat of history here, but uh, I think you know, Cameron and, was on, on the job there for just one year. Just for the one yeah. season, exactly. That's where I was going. But and, and as we said, they've been joined at the hip for for a long time, know each other very well, have the utmost respect for each other. And I think to some extent, uh, this Washington team misses Cameron Dollar in, in in some respects. I just think his personality and the and the relationship that he had a lot of with a lot of these guys that he recruited and has helped mold. He was their guard guy, he was their defense defensive guy, and I and I think they do miss him. Fell on Holiday, his third, ninth team foul against the Huskies. So court side and join Jen Mueller. Hey, Jen. Well, guys, for as much as they miss Cameron Dollar at the Husky practices, a lot of the guys say they can still hear his voice because he was the coach that really got on him for defense and effort during practice. And I think he did his job because if his voice is still echoing in, in here during practice, I'd say he did a pretty good job. No doubt about it. He drives by here basically every day when he heads to work over yep. at Seattle University. Yeah, well, it's a great opportunity for him there at, at Seattle U. And uh, I think uh, Bill Hogan in there and the staff over there did a, made a, a, a great choice in picking Cameron, someone right here, because he's well respected in this community and within the state. He's going to be a good recruiter. As you see, Pondexter getting behind the zone, similar to the way Holiday did earlier for the slam to increase the lead to 28. But Cameron is, is a guy that's going to bring some stability, and he's going to do things the correct way, and uh, people like him, and he's going to be able to recruit. 
and get things going the way they want, the direction they want them going in as they make their way back into Division One. Garcia with the miss from distance. Broussard then missing in the paint. And uh, off the uh, loose ball will be Seattle U ball. Yeah, and Abdul Gaddy. I think they got this one figured out, Francis. Yeah, well, they, they're, they're so concerned. The person down in that, that low area of the zone is just so concerned with what's trying to keep them out of the paint that they're losing sight of the person coming behind them there, get behind that zone. So that's twice they've been able to run that exact play. Three assists for Gaddy. Four for Overton to lead the Huskies. And Ondex with that slam now at 14 points. Nice steal by Overton. Behind the back. Ondex off balance. Will head to the line for two, nearly an and one for Quincy Pondexter. Well, you see the difference between these two teams really on that play right there. Overton with the speed and the quickness to get the steal, get the ball in the open court. He gets into the lane and has the ability to make the play by wrapping the ball around him, which maybe was not necessarily necessary, but drops it off to Pondexter, and he's strong enough and athletic enough to play through the foul and get a chance to get the ball up on the rim and have an opportunity for the three-point play. 15 points, just having a terrific night. Quincy Pondexter coming into this contest, averaging 19 and a half per game, nearly eight rebounds per game, shooting 54% from the floor. I mean, and, and the numbers just tell part of the story with, with this young guy. He is, he is a, a terrific, terrific character, individual on and off the court, passionate about his team, the game, and Jones and a foul inside. Once again, we connect with Jen Mule. Jen? Well, we've been talking about Quincy and his ability to score, but what we haven't really noticed is a limp that he's developed. He hurt his right ankle at about the 7.30 mark earlier in the half here. And he's shaken off medical treatment a couple of times, but I'm guessing that 16 points kind of helps eases that pain a little bit, don't you think? <laughs> I think so. And you want to keep playing because the, the more you score and the better your team does, the better you feel. Yeah. So why not? Although I got a feeling the way things are going, uh, Coach Romar is going to get pretty deep into that bench. He does anyway. But. Well, he passed Detlef Shrimp in the UCLA game. And if he gets, I believe he needs uh, 16 or 17 tonight to pass Brandon Roy for number 11. So he's uh, close to getting that. Subs. Open look for Scott. He's deadly from beyond the arc. Not that time, though. Burrell out of the pack. On the push. Pull up. No good. Rebound by Suggs. Three Huskies already into front court. And fortunately, from a Seattle U perspective, the teammates could not get the ball out on an outlet. Over to inside. Brian Ammon. Tough shot, but everything's falling tonight. Turner now with eight points. Seattle U has not scored on consecutive possessions in this game. Jones in the corner to Boxley. Mike double team. And it's off Boxley. Another turnover against the Red Hawks, number 13. Huskies with six. 5-13 left in this opening half. All Huskies, 40 to nine. Turner with the air ball. Botchley, Chris Gweth. Some room to operate. Fouled as he went up. And that's gonna go against Scott Suggs. First foul on Suggs. So going back to Pondexter for a second, the 16 points he has tonight ties him with Brandon Roy for number 11. If he gets 17, that'll tie him with Doug Smart for number 10. And if he gets 27, he can catch Deion Luton for number nine. I, th I think two of those guys are gonna be stepping back. Gonna have to move over. Deion may hang on for another game, we'll have to see. <laughs> As Quincy takes a seat. Jones uh, checking out for Seattle U. 
Broussard back in for the Red Hawks. And now for Chris Squeth on that second free throw. Huskies lead by 30. 33. Three ball by Turner, who's in double figures with 11. Squeth, nice find. Missed, though, that time by Gilmore. Overton on the push. Benoit Overton will head to the line. Yeah, too quick, too fast, too much size. Coming off a tough loss. Huskies clicking on all cylinders right now. Friday night, the excitement of the Western Hockey League returns on FSN. The Seattle Thunderbirds will face off against the Spokane Chiefs in Western Conference action from Spokane Arena. Live coverage begins at 7 on FSN and FSN HD. Overton at the line this season, shoots 76%. He had a very strong game at USC with 18 points, one off his career high. Yeah, he did. He was uh, he was very aggressive in taking the ball to the basket. He was the, the lone bright spot uh, in a game that was uh, otherwise pretty much underwhelming. Steal by Turner. Another turnover against Seattle U. Inside for Shears, and he's fouled by Gilmore. And so nothing, absolutely nothing going right tonight for Seattle U. Just unable to find any type of rhythm, rhythm really offensively or defensively. You know, Washington has uh, has really come out with a, with a lot of energy, and the, the one thing that I do like, I do like the fact that they're they are making an effort to drop the ball inside occasionally because they're they're going to need that. Uh, as we get further and further into this Pac-10 season. Cameron Dollar just substituting Peter Harris into the game as Cervante Burrell checks out. And certainly Cameron coming into this game knew there was a talent gap. But I think certainly had much higher expectations for his club coming into this contest. Very disappointing night for him. Another turnover. Overton. To Suggs. Get the bounce, rebound inside by Gwen to Broussard. Doubled up by Gaddy and Overton. Down low, Gilmore no good, and the rebound by Brashears. Inside of four minutes left in the opening half. So it's an open three. Got it. And one. Foul on Peter Harris. Scott Suggs. With the triple, looking to complete the four-point play. It has been all Washington inside, outside, anywhere on the court. The Huskies up by 39. Well, here's the real deal on this game. All Washington, Seattle University, three for 24, shooting 12.5% and 15 turnovers. There is no scenario that you can win a game with those types of numbers. None whatsoever, but you, you have to give credit to Washington. I mean, they had their attention with the, with the win, Seattle U's win over Oregon State. And the Dove was not gonna allow that to happen to them. So they've really come out and, uh, and really played well and played hard. Garcia, who has been quiet, found by Brian Aminen. Chuck Garcia will head to the line. His third trip to the stripe tonight. 0 for 5 from the floor. Huskies on a 13 2 run over the last 3 minutes and 40 seconds. Charles Garcia, junior out of Los Angeles. Just his second point. Overton checking out for the Huskies as Pondexter returns. And again, the next time he scores, he will surpass Brandon Roy on the Huskies' all-time scoring list. Garcia connects on the second, making it a 49-12 Husky lead. And the one thing about Seattle U, as, as bad as things have gone for them, they're, they're still playing hard, and they're still trying to compete. And I know that's what Cameron is looking for right now. I mean, he's trying to build. Trying to get his program to this level at the very least. 
So guys have to come out and compete and show that they're going to play through the adversity because you're going to have nights like this. Washington is coming off a similar bad night that they had in Southern Cal, but you have to continue to compete and play hard. Breath in the corner to Harris. Contact with Turner. And inside, a foul will go against Suds. And that should send Garcia back to the line for the Red Hawks. It's actually been a pretty physical game around the basket. Uh, a lot of pushing and shoving and grabbing and holding. And Garcia back at the line again where he's lived this entire season. But as you mentioned, only a 61% foul shooter. 231 free throw attempts coming in. 47 more than any other player in the nation, averaging more than 11 free throws per game. It's interesting, I think, Francis, in terms of his numbers. He would not have those numbers had he been a Husky, at least we don't think so. I mean, because no. you have those other options in Pine Dexter and Thomas and the rest of the talent uh, on this team. And he, I don't know, probably would have played more in the paint, back to the basket, where Seattle U is a guy that's facing the hoop, playing on the perimeter. In terms of his development for the next level, honestly, yeah. Seattle U may have been better for him. Oh, 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 Inside, yeah. Pine Dexter fouled, and Quincy will head to the line. Well, even after all of the time that uh, Cameron Dollar and the Washington staff had spent recruiting him, they were not aware of his perimeter skills because everywhere they saw him play, he always played in the paint with his back to the basket. It wasn't until this summer where a lot of the guys were coming back to Cameron and saying, hey, coach, I mean, you know, this guy can play away from the basket. So once they got into their, their preseason workouts and their individual workouts and really started seeing what his, his skill set was, they, they saw that, hey, you know, we've got something here. But in high school and in, in JC, he always played with his back to the basket. So who knew? Well, they know now. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's really not put it on all of it on display tonight in terms of his talents. Again, give the Huskies credit for that. Garcia inside. Gets his first bucket. Now one for six from the floor. By the way, with those uh, free throws. In fact, with that first free throw, last time down, Quincy Pondexter, who remains on fire, moved ahead of Brandon Roy on the all-time scoring list.
Trey. Good defense that time by Turner. Brian Ammoney ahead to Suggs. Saves it to Gaddy for two. And a foul inside. And it'll go against one of the Huskies. And Brian, Brian Ammoney picks it up. Second personal. And free throws coming for the Red Hawks. And I think Washington will live with that because that's they need that type of physical play from Brian Amani. They they need that from him. So they they want they can have him and Gant and Brashears. If they all use up all five of their fouls, so what? Be physical, go after all those rebounds and have a presence in there. And again, it's not about it's not about doing anything beyond the rules, but no. it's it's playing hard, tough nose basketball. So Going after rebounds, keeping balls alive. You got somebody driving the lane. You want them to think there could be some contact cut. They need to feel it. They need to feel it from time to time. Just like on that baseline drive earlier. Play through that contact. Don't try to avoid it. Play through it. Garrett Lever returning to the Red Hawks lineup. Number 24. Peter Harris checks out. And a 25 left in the half. Huskies up 55 to 16. See how you went into a man-to-man -to -man and wanted to get a little half-court trap going if they could, but nice job of handling the pressure by Gaddy. Inside, Brian Ammoney. 57 to 16. NBA with four points. Season. They blew out Portland State 111 to 55. Gaddy inside on the drive. Nice lay in. Abdul Gaddy now with seven points to go along with four rebounds and three assists. Nice stat line for him. Blocking foul on Gant. Garcia to the line. We'll see Seattle U and Portland State on uh, March 2nd. On FSN. Second foul on Gant. Garcia at the line where he's connected on five of seven. Just one of seven from the floor. Seven points, just one rebound for Garcia tonight. On the defensive end, not a lot of rebounds to be had. Washington is really shot. have connected on 14 of 19 as a team. Seattle U, 10 of 20. Colin Gueth, his third. NBA connecting on 52% from the floor. A trip to uh, L.A. Played just four minutes against UCLA. Came back against uh, SC. Had eight points, six rebounds in 29 minutes against the Trojans. Ten seconds left in the half. Garcia working on Gant. Lock at five. Followed good by Gilmore just before the buzzer. And the Huskies head to the locker room up 41 points, 61 to 20. Nothing going right for Seattle U. Everything going right for the Huskies at home. Halftime coverage is coming your way. Stick around. We have more from Bank of America right here on FSN. Second half about to
to get underway at Bank of America uh, Arena. Charles Garcia and the Red Hawks hoping to make it at least somewhat interesting here in the second half as they trail the Huskies by 41. And maybe we'll get to see some of the, the talents of Chuck Garcia on a greater display here in the second half. He's got a, a Husky team that did a terrific job against him in the first half. By the way, that Husky lead at halftime, their biggest lead at intermission this season. Garcia doing uh, almost all of his damage at the free throw line. Again, no surprise, he averages over 11 free throws per game, tops in the country, and just uh, not in a comfort zone offensively. In fact, really nobody. No. That Seattle U team has any rhythm on the offensive end. They did, though, win the opening tip yep, well, to we'll start the ball game. We'll see how they respond. Uh, as I said, against Harvard at the at the Key Arena, which was a home game for them, they were down by 21-22 and came out with a 12-0 run and got themselves right back in it. So Cameron Dollar is just looking for no no lack of effort, keep playing hard, and good, bad, or indifferent. You just got to continue to compete. Get off to a nice start with Cervante Burrell getting the hoop. Overton, strong, and rebound by Broussard. He got tangled up with Overton, and Overton called for the foul, and I think Lorenzo Romar making the point, how can it be a foul? He's not just ground. simply on the ground. <laughs> and, and conversely for Washington, they can't come out and just kind of now start going through the motions because they're up 41. They need to get themselves into the, the mindset of we have to play 40 minutes regardless of the level of competition, 40-minute game is what we need to have, so we need to play better in the second half than we did in the first. Steve Burrell kind of lose the handle on that pass, and an easy transition deuce for Justin Holliday on the assist from Abdul Gaddy. Garcia over Brashears. And there's some range finally from Chuck Garcia. Yeah, and that's a good looking shot. Just turn and face, he gave him space. He took, took the opportunity that was there. And he's, he's a pretty good outside shooter. So just uh, make the game easy. Holiday, speaking of easy, that looked very easy. For the Huskies from Quincy Pondexter, 65 to 24. Holiday with 11 points. He's now into double figures. Burrell, with the open look for a three, no good. On Dexter to Holiday. Four on two break for the Huskies. On Dexter will head to the line for two as he's fouled by Mike Boxley. Now, but what I don't like in, with regards to how the Huskies are playing right now, Pon Dexter on the three on one break. Underhand pass to Holiday. He gets the rebound here. Underhand pass on the, on the break. And then right here, the underhand pass back to Pondexter, you have to stay fundamentally sound. Don't start playing around with the basketball because you have this big lead because this is not indicative of the level of competition you're going to be playing against. So keep it sound. Stay, stay solid. The last found, by the way, not Boxley. It goes on Gruff, his fourth. will remain in the game. Now substitutions. Second half, Huskies up by 40. We go courtside and reconnect with Jen Mueller. Jen? Seattle U coach Cameron Dollar really didn't try to hide his disappointment at halftime when I had a chance to talk to him. He admitted that the Huskies overwhelmed his team a little bit and said that they'll still try to chip away in the second half, even though this is a big mountain to overcome. And you guys have touched on it in the first half. Even though Seattle U is down, they have not given up when it comes to effort. They're still going at it awfully hard on the court. Cameron will not have it any other way. Obviously, he's not going to get the result uh, coming into this game that he would have liked, but he certainly is going to make sure that he 
gets the effort that he demands. Overton inside, tied up. I think one official may have a foul, the other may have a jump ball that will be a foul. And that goes against Chris Gweth, and his night is over. Gweth is claiming that was five? not me. He was playing with four. They're saying that's five. Cameron Dollar out on the court. And this might be a good opportunity for the officials maybe to see the replay. You can see the shot was contested by Alex Jones. Gweth was near the play. Wow, then that's a, if that is the case, that's a tough blow for, for Seattle U. You see over to here, Gweth is here, is right there. That's, that's not a foul on Gweth, if anything, a foul on Jones. But what's done is done, and Chris Gweth takes a seat, and he's done for the night. Peter Harris, Peter yeah. Harris checking in for Seattle U as Gilmore checks out. Very small lineup on the floor right now for the Red Hawks. As you look at uh, Garrett Lever, number five, Peter Harris, 24, Taylor Olson, 12. Boxley up front with... Uh, Alex Jones. So after the free throw, 68-26 Husky lead. Wilson back court. Grimes in, followed by Jones, no good. Boxley to Harris, back to Boxley for the lay-in. Mike Boxley getting his second bucket. He has four points. And here, here's one thing you do not want in a game like this. You do not want a lot of fouls and have this thing end up spending a lot of time at, at both free throw lines. So <laughs> I'm just being honest. Let's just play ball. Von Dexter in the corner, double teamed, fouled. And you see Lorenzo, I don't think we got a shot of that, but you see Lorenzo imploring his guys to pass the ball. Yeah. That's what they did such a great job of in the first half. And now all of a sudden, you got ball stoppers out there because we're up 40 and, and everything's flowing our way, but you want to continue to be solid. Move the basketball the way you did in the first half and get open looks. That's a good find by Overton. Knock the shot down by Holiday. That's the way they played in the first half. Holiday, Justin Holiday with 13 points. That's his third. We got a little something going on here with Overton and Harris. We got to keep our eye on those two. Right. There's a little something going on, going on there. Fifteen fouls against the Huskies. Fourteen fouls against Seattle U. See that? See, there's this something going on with those two. Held ball, possession arrow pointing to Washington. Overton, Gaddy, Holiday, Pond Dexter, and Matthew Bryan Amning on the court right now for the Huskies. Olsen, Harris, Lever, Boxley with the hold and the foul on Pond Dexter. Also out on the court for Seattle U, Alex Jones. And Seattle U wanting to continue to scrap and play hard. You see this, the double team there. Overton and Harris, they get tied up. And uh, you see there's a little extra there between the two of them. They've been playing each other real physical here to start the second half. Cameron Dollar with some issues. And he and Coach Romar were at midcourt. Cameron was doing most of the talking. Lorenzo was doing most of the listening. And when the referee was telling them to, to settle down a little bit, Cameron was telling his guys, no, no, keep playing hard. Keep playing hard. They're, not, they're not playing dirty. He just wants them to continue to play hard and compete. 17-13, left in the game with the Huskies leading 70 to 28. Not a trying to not a fish is trying to clean it up. Foul on Harris. Already 16 fouls against the Foul on Harris, his third. Another foul. Lever went to help up Overton. He declined the assistance. Foul on Lever. His third, and we are in the bonus situation for the Huskies. Seventh team foul against Seattle U. So even with this being the case, now I, I think.
see Seattle, you, I'm not going to say they lost their composure. They're just trying to make a statement. They're trying to make a statement that you're not going to just push us, push us out of here. If we go down, we're going to go down with a fight. At the same time, Washington has to maintain their composure and as Coach Romar talked about, remain professional and play through regardless of how physical or how tough Seattle you can, can, wants to play them. Just keep playing our brand and our style of basketball. Overton earns the second. Garcia, Burrell, and Broussard have returned to the Seattle U lineup. Roy Overton with that free throw. Perfect five to five at the line tonight. Total of seven points, also seven assists, a couple of rebounds. The junior out of Franklin High School in Seattle, now with eight points in the 72-28 Husky lead. Overton with the defense on Cervante Burrell. Overplay by Holiday. Good defensive intensity mm -hmm. right there by Justin. Well, he's taken, taken on this matchup with Garcia and done a good job. Burrell got himself into trouble. And how did he get the headshot to go? Drove in, saw Prime Dexter, got off balance, threw it up, but see the hustle drop. See, Quincy nonchalant with the basketball. Beaver from behind. Burrell countering for Seattle U goes inside. Garcia cleans it up. A little energy, a little, a little momentum for Seattle U. A foul in backcourt against Burrell. Bucket for Garcia gave him 13 points. Third personal foul on Burrell. Eighth team foul against and we see Quincy in the open court and see he's being nonchalant. He's, he's standing straight up. He's not, doesn't have any awareness. His teammates aren't talking to him, wolf, wolf, or whatever their terminology is with somebody coming up from behind him. And again, 40 minutes of solid, fundamentally sound basketball is I'm sure what that staff is looking for. First three and a half minutes have not been so for Washington. Garcia in the front point, uh, court, guarded by Pine Dexter. Charles with the spin, left hand. Quincy with the rebound. And here come the Huskies. Offensive foul, Brian Amining as he takes out Lever. Garrett Lever, by the way, son of a former Arizona State star and NBA player, Fat Lever. Foul on Brian Amining, his third. You think he's still fat or he wants to be called Lafayette now? He was never fat, <laughs> but he got the nickname fat. Yeah, well, that's what I mean. Player. Oh, no, he, he used to do it big. I think it was Arizona State teams. I think it was with Alton Lister. Yep. Well, he spent some time with the uh, Sonics. Jones held by Brian Amining. Foul on NBA. That's his fourth, also the fourth team foul. Four minutes and ten seconds into the second half, and the Huskies with that huge lead over Seattle U. Huskies up by 41 over the Red Hawks. 15-50 left to play at Bank of America Arena. Really been uh, all Washington since the uh, opening tip. And Francis, some um, familiar faces for Seattle University on hand. Well, you see uh, four guys there that competed against each other when this rivalry was pretty hot and heavy before uh, Seattle U de-emphasized basketball. From right to left there on your screen, your screen, Kenny Lyles, who played at the University of Washington, and Don Vaughn. And then Carl Irvin, one of their all-time greats, and Kevin Souter. Those four guys are all local products. Uh, Kenny went to Garfield. Vaughn was from Pasco. Carl on a couple of great high school teams at Cleveland High School. And then Kevin Souter, who was from, I believe, Mercer Island, if I'm not mistaken, with Mercer Island High School. But uh, four guys that are a part of the history of this rivalry that, that played in it back in the late 70s and uh, early 80s here rooting on their respective teams. And uh, right now, I guess Kenny and Don got a little more to talk about than uh, Kevin and Carl. I, I was going to say, nice, though, that, that Kenny and Don weren't taunting their uh, Well, they knew they were on camera. So I was going to say, they, they, they cleaned it up for the cameras. No, look, see, yeah. they're, uh, they're, they're being pretty classy they're being about humble. it. But, uh, go. Four good guys. Kenny was actually my high school teammate at Garfield and uh, played against Don in the, in the state tournament when he was at Pasco. And, of course, Carl with Jawan Oldham and James Jawan Oldham who played at Seattle U. James Woods who played here at 
at the University of Washington, uh, played on the back-to-back -back state championship teams at Cleveland, 75 and 76, shooter, of course, of the Mercer Island at Pepple program. So four really good high school players back in their day who had nice careers uh, at the Division I level. Good to have them here tonight. Held ball, possession arrow pointing in favor of the Huskies. Holiday, Gant, Pondexter, Gaddy, Overton. On the floor for Washington, Broussard, Boxley, Garcia, Olsen, and Burrell on the court for the Red Hawks. Cameron Dollar raising an issue with one of the officials. And it may be the possession arrow. Maybe Cameron is contending that it should be Seattle U ball. Possession to inbound, 30 seconds on the shot clock. Holiday inside, Overton fouled. It's going to be the 10th team foul against Seattle U. The Huskies in the double bonus. 10 fouls committed by the Red Hawks in the first four minutes and 20 seconds of this half. And I think that's all as part of Coach Dollar and his team wanting to send a message that they weren't going to go away, that they weren't going to go away without without a fight, which is, which is commendable. I mean, we want them to play through this. Fourth foul on Cervante Burrell. Weth is already fouled out. And if you've been watching and you're wondering, where is Isaiah Thomas tonight? Isaiah with a stomach flu is not at the arena. Scott Sutch was hit with that flu a couple weeks ago. Assistant uh, Jim Shaw also hit with it. The whole team had it in preseason. Yeah. Oh, terrific, terrific passing by the Huskies, finished off by Abdul Gaddy. Give the assist to Darnell Gant. Terrific transition basketball by the Dogs. That's a nice job in the open court by Gant. I mean, we're talking 6'8, six, 6'9, six, 4 5 man for the Huskies and catches the ball in the open court and makes a good decision. Nice bounce pass right on the money, and Gaddy finishes at the rim and plays through the foul. Abdul Gaddy closing in on a, his career high, which is 13 points. He has 10. Justin Holiday already with a career high tonight. As he has 13 on 6 of 7 shooting. Quincy Pondexter leading the way. 23 points, 9 rebounds, so a board away from a double-double. Well, a lot of little things Washington can, can continue to work on in this game with the big lead. I mean, let's make our free throws. Let's stay on the glass, not give up second shots. Let's not turn the basketball over. Speaking of turnovers, that one committed by Garcia. Seattle University with 19 turnovers tonight. Averaged uh, just over 17 per game coming in. Another foul. Keep, keep the managers on their toes. Make sure Clarence Trent and Brendan Schur have their jerseys on over their warm-ups because they're going to get in the game here pretty quick. Taylor Olson picking up his third foul. Brendan Shear, the people's choice. People's choice. Walk over this year.
Boshley and Olsen and Gweth, the three seniors on the team for Seattle U, and actually came into the program when the whispers were that they were going to go back to Division One. So these uh, these three guys at least will be able to look back and say they were part of getting the program back to that level. Each one of them have done a great job while they've been at Seattle U, have had a good basketball experience. Obviously, they're getting a great education at Seattle U, and uh, they'll be able to look back fondly with their time there, both uh, academically and athletically. Ray Overton after his work at the line, now with 12 points, another foul. That goes against Overton. That's his fourth. Sixth team foul against the Huskies, and quickly Scott Suggs will check in, we presume, for Hanoi. Can't make that pass. Number 15, Find right on the sideline. Overton. Uh, sniffed out. Overton does check out as Suggs checks in. Scott with three points, three rebounds tonight. And the ball's being defended on the sideline like that. One of the most important things is to use the ball fake to move the defense. Boxley looking inside of Jones. That's, that's a nice job yeah, by good Jones. Post up. That was good a good post-up. Post up see, he played through the contact. He just made a good physical move, and I'm going to play through the contact and, and draw the foul and get to the line. That foul goes against Suggs, his third. Seventh team foul. A couple free throws coming up for Alex Jones, who shoots 75% from the line. Actually, Jones, best three-point shooter on this Seattle U team. Coming into the game, hits on 11 of 23, 47%. Total team fouls in this game. Seattle University with 30. Huskies with 20. Inside Broussard with the offensive rebound. And then Broussard called for the... I thought a foul call. Yeah, it is a foul call on Broussard. That's his second personal. And the Huskies take over possession. That'll be a turnover against Seattle U. 20th against the Red Hawks. Foul in backcourt on Harris. Renzo Romar quickly calling his club over. I don't think he liked the way they were kind of standing around on that inbound play. Again, with the big lead, he's trying to make sure guys stay focused on their responsibility on each and every offensive possession and defensive assignment. Something I'd like to see Washington do when they get back into Pac-10 play is exactly what Seattle U is doing right now. They did it a little bit at the end of the USC game, but for the most part, their, their pressure has just been man-to-man, -man, full court. I'd like to see them do a little more trapping and change their defenses up because the one thing Cameron has done consistently all season with the Red Hawk team is they change their defenses up quite a bit, and particularly with their presses. And I think Washington has obviously has more athletes and, and better athletes, and that's something that they could do especially with the depth that they have, and they could pressure people and do it in a lot of different ways. Elston Turner hitting one out of two. Foul on Gant, his third. Eighth team foul, free throws coming up. One and one for Chuck Garcia. Number 22 on this throwback uh, jersey night for Seattle University in honor of one Elgin Baylor. If you look at some of the famous numbers in Seattle University history. Now, a number of these numbers, if you will, have been retired. Yes. Every player with a retired number gave his permission for that number to be worn here tonight. So, whether it was Elgin Baylor or Clint Richardson, number 44, they all said, by all means, wear those numbers again. Numbers for the Red Hawks. Garcia missing the throw down the pass off target. On Dexter over to Suggs. Broussard in backcourt. A lot of contact there. And there's the foul call. Here you go, back in the day. Elgin Baylor, you see in the back row, number 22 right there. Long sleeve and obviously a, a color change from then to now. Red and white, the official colors for Seattle University. Then, as it is tonight, 
Burgundy and Gold. Checking in for Seattle. Garcia checking out. The full shirt, short sleeves. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's taking it way back. Here at Lever also checking out of the Seattle University lineup. Harris and Cervante Burrell in the backboard now for Seattle U. Suggs making it an 82-38 Husky lead with 13-45 left in this second half. Burrell in the corner to Harris. Guarded by Turner. Harris dribbling the ball off his foot. Burrell scoops it up. Jones with the pick. Nice split of the defense by Burrell. Can't finish. Gant can't control the rebound. Seattle U will get another crack at it. Well, Darnell Gant, a young man who, well, Francis, I think the Huskies expected more development out of, of this year. He's been kind of stagnant in terms of what he did in really a solid freshman season a year ago. What does he need to do to really become more of a factor for this club? We talked about having more of a presence, more of a, a toughness by those big guys inside. Well, he did a great job of taking advantage of his red shirt year and then coming in when it was time for him to play and doing a nice job. Yeah. I think he's the one, I think he's the player on this team that misses John Brockman the most. Because John, you know, took up so much space in there and you had to be so concerned and aware of where he was that all Darnell had to do was kind of be the garbage man. So yeah. he went and got all of the rebounds that people were fighting John for. If he didn't get them, he went and got them. And this year they wanted him to rebound more, and early in the year he wasn't doing that. I thought he did a nice job of knocking down a little 10, 12-foot jump shot in the corner. Yep. He seemed to be expanding it out to the elbow and was doing that. But he wasn't rebounding and defending the way that they wanted him to, and so that gave Brashears the opportunity, and now he's moved into the starting lineup. But I think as we get deeper in the season because of his experience and the fact that Brashears still is not really in basketball shape, and he can only really practice a couple times a week, which I think Jim may have more on that. There's going to be an opportunity for Darnell to uh, get those minutes back because they're going to need him. Just a sophomore. So, I mean, he, he, he's still got a lot of basketball to play for Lorenzo Romar. The last foul, by the way, was on Aaron Broussard, his fourth. Taylor Olson with the ball. He has four fouls, trying to find Boxley inside. It's stolen by Gaddy. Nice job bringing the ball in the front court by Abdul. He finds Gant. Find Dexter. Came out the relatively quiet second half for Quincy Find Dexter after the explosive first half. Olsen looking for three and finding three more. He can do that. Taylor Olsen can do that. Ask uh, Spencer Halls and Martell Webster. <laughs> <laughs> he, can, he can knock those shots down. Gant with the reverse. Team's starting to get up and down the court on each other. Olsen inside. Couldn't get it to go. Rebound by Pine Dexter. Quincy with that last hoop up to 25 points and 11 rebounds. His double double is secured. Loose ball. Burrell ahead to Olsen. Back to Boxley. Mike losing it. Turner with it. Two on one Huskies. Contact, offensive foul against Quincy Pondexter. Quincy made that last shot from the outside, but he's, he's lost focus. A little flip shot he did earlier in the lane. And now that opportunity there, he had to just pass it back to Turner for a layup. And uh, that's just the focus and the concentration that were at such an optimum level earlier. Just not there now. Third foul on Quincy Pondexter. Clarence Trent will check in for the first time tonight. Got his jersey on. Freshman. Has a jersey on, so he's passed the first test. He's ready to play.
plenty to cheer about for the Washington Huskies tonight as they are controlling this contest and have from the get go against Seattle University. 11-33, left to play in the second half. Elston Turner for the Huskies. There's Elston Turner, dad. Senior. Playing uh, in the NBA with one of the clubs he played with, the Dallas Mavericks. And Elston Senior was a teammate with the father of one of the Seattle University players on hand tonight. As you look at Elston Jr. out of Missouri City, Texas, the sophomore guard. Had his fat lever with the Denver Nuggets, and that is where Fat and Elston Turner were teammates for a couple of seasons in the mid 80s in the Mile High City. And there's Fat's son, Garrett Lever, a junior out of Phoenix, Arizona. So I wonder if later tonight the dads might get on the phone and chat it up a little bit about this contest. Elston Turner, an assistant coach with the uh, Houston Rockets, right there. Along with Jackson. Yep. Was at the uh, Seattle. Sports Star of the Year awards last week and had some shots of Jack Vintage Perm, if you remember Jack when he had the Perm to Perm. <laughs> yep. Not his best look, but a great player and a terrific guy. On cue, Elston Turner with the deuce. And Turner now with 14 points. Huskies with five players in double figures, led by the 25 of Quincy Pondexter. Husky lineup, Turner, Gaddy. Trent, Holiday, and Suggs. As Lever goes inside and draws contact against Holiday, and Garrett Lever will head to the strike. Yeah, Clarence Trent didn't do a good job that time of helping to defend on that on that pick and roll. He, he didn't allow, didn't get out far enough and hedge far enough to to make him make a to detour him from going to the basket and allow his teammate to get underneath the screen. To recover. Hey, a reminder to join us again on Thursday for a big night of Pac-10 hoops. Action tips off from Corvallis as Oregon State does battle with USC. That's followed by Ernie Kent's Ducks of Oregon squaring off with UCLA. Live coverage gets underway at 5 p.m. on FSN and FSN HD. 89-43 Huskies. Lever made one out of two. Trent. Dropping the ball, Burrell picks it up, heads the other direction, and gets it to go over Clarence Trent, who is going for the block. Nice play by Cervante Burrell. Burrell with 10 points as he becomes the second Red Hawk into double figures. Garcia with 16. Turner with the left and one. Elston Turner will head to this stripe, and he's having a big ball game with 16 points to go along with three rebounds. Not something we've seen Elson Turner do much this year, getting the ball to the basket. He's basically been an outside shooter, but a good job of getting into the lane and finishing with the left hand and giving himself an opportunity for three-point play. Elston Turner with a new career high now with those 16 points. And now make it 17 as he completes the three-point play and scored 15 points earlier this season back on December 3rd in that overtime loss at Texas Tech. Huskies nearing 100 with the 92-45 lead. Burrell coming up short. Loose ball by Turner. Held ball, possession arrow. Pointing to Seattle U. First time tonight we've seen Washington go into a zone. Got 10 minutes left in the game. Not, not a bad time for them to maybe work on some things that they're going to be using as they get deeper into the season. Renzo Romar and his... Eighth season as head coach of the Huskies. First season here without Cameron Dollar on his bench. All into Boxley with an open look, and Mike connects. Boxley with six points, has made three of five shots tonight. Overton out of the double team to Holiday. And the foul. Against Boxley, I think, away from the ball. Check it. It goes against Jones. Alex Jones coming in against fourth foul. And with both teams in the double bonus, Clarence Trent steps to the line to shoot two. Clarence has made eight of 11 this season. Well, he is definitely one of the 
better athletes on this Washington team. We saw him at Midnight Madness put on a real display, dunking the basketball. He's had a few highlight reel dunks here in the season, but uh, he's going to be a good one for Washington, I think. Is he uh, kind of biding his time, going through the freshman doldrums, so to speak, of being on the bench? But uh, I think Clarence is going to be a solid player for Washington. Francis is, is one of his big issues, and we haven't seen a ton of him. Does he need to develop more of a perimeter game in terms of his shot, or is that there? We just haven't seen that much of it. Well, with his size, he is kind of a tweener. Yeah. So it would be nice for him to develop some things on the on the perimeter, which would allow him to maybe get on the court. But the one thing that he is very good at that I've seen in the time that we've seen him is that he is a very good passer, and he's a real good interior passer. And uh, you know, those are, those are things you don't often find with guys. Bruce Sard scoring for the Red Hawks. Huskies will maintain possession. Aaron Bruce Sard now. Tough with luck two for two points. First basket for him tonight. Tough luck for Olsen on that last yeah. shot. I mean, he's that, looking that for his third three all of the, the half. way down in the basket and then comes out. Jones checking out. Gavin Gilmore, senior out of Pasco High School, returning to the Red Hawk lineup. Nine thirty-five left to play here at Bank of America Arena on a night when the Huskies have really done a terrific job, and again playing without Isaiah Thomas tonight, who has the flu, is not in the building. Foul will go against Boxley. That's his fourth. So on the court right now, four Red Hawks with four fouls: Boxley, Burrell, Broussard, and Taylor Olson. And Holiday at the line tonight with that miss, one of three. He has 13 points though. That's a new career high for him. Previous high was 10 in the blowout back in November of Portland State. Burrell checking out for Seattle U. Garcia back in the lineup for the Red Hawks. Huskies have shot 47 free throws here tonight. It made 33. Seattle U has made 15 of 28. And Seattle U really has no point guard on the floor right now because Olsen is not a one, but he's going to try to direct traffic out there. And Washington really needs to uh, to play tough as they go into the zone defense that they're, they're going to need. They leave a wide open look for Boxley in the corner. And what you always have to guard against when you play zone, the weak side yeah. rebounding. So a lot left to work on here for Washington with still nine minutes to play. Rebound and basket by Broussard. And another foul. And that goes against Gavin Gilmore. That's his third personal. And Scott Suggs will head the stripe. Three for five there tonight. Six points for Suggs. And good ball movement by Seattle U. Boxley spots up in the corner, gets a good look, shot goes up. You see Garcia's in position for a rebound, and a nice job by Broussard to come from the wing to uh, corral that rebound and lay it in. So Washington has to do a better job of getting on the glass as they now try to do it in the, out of the zone defense as opposed to what they typically do with the man-to-man. -man. Hey! Suggs makes both free throws, but a lane violation against Trent, and it's wiped away. Renzo Romar jumping on that. He's just so frustrated. That, why, why do that? I mean, it's not that the game, again, it's the point you made earlier in this half. It's not that this game is in question. He just wants to see his guys do things the right way. Garcia inside. Gets it to go. And Trent called for an intentional foul as he inbounded the ball and made contact with Garcia. Well, we might get a chance to, to take a look at it. See Garcia go up. Well, there was there was some contact there. I don't know if it wasn't just incidental, but there was definitely contact. But it goes back to what Coach Romar was talking about at the half, that you can't allow yourself, as you saw Garcia grab his, his shorts there right quick, you can't allow yourself to get caught up in all of that. You just got to remain professional, as he said, and, and finish the game. Garcia now 11 of 15 at the line. He has 19 points. He's connected on just four of 13 from the floor. Well, obviously, there's been a lot of talk about, about Chuck Garcia Francis in terms of as a junior, a guy who's been heavily scouted by the NBA, 
is there any way that he comes back for his senior season. Any thoughts on that? Well if I was a if I was a betting man to travel I would say probably not and, yeah. the, and, a, and the reason I say that is just uh, from conversations that I have had with some people about his personal situation um, if he has that opportunity to go he should probably go just is, is there any doubt do you think right now that he's a, at least a first round pick well I don't think it's a lot uh, I, I think that it's a very good possibility I know that there have been a number of teams that have been basically following him around ever since the word got out about uh, his talent but I could definitely say right now there's a very strong possibility because I've seen enough NBA people and enough agents yeah. around that's always a sign yeah that's <laughs> always a sign there have been enough NBA people and enough agents around that the buzz is probably that this guy is a first round pick and, and when you look at his talent he would be drafted on his potential yeah so if you look at a team maybe not a lottery team but a team at the bottom of the first round that doesn't need a guy to come in right away and contribute where they can they can work with him and just bring him along slowly I, I, I wouldn't be surprised at all if someone taking him in the first round because he is definitely talented double dribble on Olsen the reason you, you need to from his standpoint need as much information as you can first round guaranteed contract second round not when you're talking about the NBA exactly. so that's an important part of of that decision making process for any young man who might be a late first round potential uh, early second round pick. Well, even if we look at it from uh, the standpoint of uh, the situation with Jake Locker. Yeah. You know, a lot of people thought just because the collective bargaining agreement with the NFL is getting ready to change that he needed to go. But I think from if we just start talking strictly football he needed to come back because he's probably not ready. And if you're talking in, in, in Chuck Garcia's case about a late first round pick you're going to one of the stronger teams in the NBA a team that's not looking for an immediate impact from a rookie taken in that position so that potential they can work with mm -hmm. wait on a little bit and uh, not have high expectations right out of the gate Broussard with the foul he's done as he fouls out of the contest with four points let's go uh, court side to Jen Mueller and a little more information from Jim. Well, you guys have talked about how the scouts are just catching on to Chuck and Charles Garcia. Well, the Husky players have known about him for a long time because they play a lot of pickup games against Seattle U in the offseason. And if you believe the Huskies, they usually play like these best of seven series. And right now, the dogs have the upper advantage. And they kind of view tonight's game as an extension of that series. But I'm going to say, if I'm the dogs, I'm going to be careful this offseason because I think Seattle U might be coming after them a little harder. Well, it adds a little flavor to those games, no doubt about it. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, the summer will be interesting, but next year they get them in Key Arena. Yeah. They, they play at Key Arena next year. So uh, it'll be a home game for the Red Hawks. They will definitely be much more familiar with those surroundings and will have had longer to make that their home court and try to create that home court advantage. So it'll be an interesting uh, set of circumstances next year. 7.55 left to play. The Huskies. Still in front, as you might imagine. They're going to stay in front with this huge lead over Seattle. U. Well, it's not a long ride home to the Red Hawks, but about as long as a four mile drive can be. I don't think, I think he might make them walk. Maybe. Oh, pretty play. Matthew Bryan Amening with the finish. Roy Overton with the assist. His eight to go along with 13 points NBA with eight points tonight from the corner Harris well, they're, gonna, the they're gonna get a lot of stuff Washington's gonna get a lot of stuff on film that they're gonna need to work on if they're gonna if they're gonna play some zone I know the zone might be uh, an attempt to, to back off a little bit with such a big lead but it's you know, not out of the realms of reality that they may need to play zone at some point sometimes so they need to continue to work on it and, and, and stay focused Gavin Gilmore with a foul, his fourth. And Holiday at the line with the Huskies two points shy of 100. Huskies with a season high of 111 points in the uh, victory early this season against Portland State. The Huskies also with a season high 51 free throw attempts. They've made 36. 
And with that, they reach the century mark and lead the Red Hawks 100 to 57 with 720 still left to play. And that total of 111 very much in jeopardy. Olsen on the ground gets it over to Boxley. Ball movement by the Red Hawks. Jones in and out and back in again for three. Just a friendly roll. Jones is a good outside shooter. The game against um, Harvard, we saw him knock down a couple shots from the outside. Held ball. And the possession arrow pointing to Seattle U. And Jones, a junior out of Phoenix, transfer from Scottsdale Community College. Well, Seattle U and, and, and Coach Dollar and what they're trying to get going here, one of the things that he talked to me about was wanting to do a great job of recruiting the local talent. Want it to be similar to the, to the Memphis program. Want to look up one day where he's got a core group of guys from this city, from this area, with other guys from around the country sprinkled in. And another thing that will make this game very interesting next year, the recruiting class that Coach Dollar has coming in with three guys right now, He's got Chad Rasmussen down at Tacoma Community College, excellent outside shooter at about 6667, who is a local product. He's coming in next year. Mark McLaughlin, people may remember him. Played at Bothell, originally was going to go to WSU, wanted to get re-recruited, went to Nevada, wanted to get re-recruited, went to Baylor, changed his mind, and now he's coming to Seattle U. But another local product that will add some depth and some shooting to this program, and Freddie Wilson from the Franklin programs at a prep school right now uh, will be at Seattle U next year. So that'll add even more local flavor to this game as this rivalry with the five-year deal and you make it six with the exhibition game, so to speak, that they played last year. This rivalry will, will pick up and get a lot more heated as time goes along. Yeah, in fact, they played last year because uh, Lehigh couldn't get to town because of the big because snow the we had. Right. And so uh, there was room on the schedule. and. UW reached out to uh, Seattle U or Seattle U reached out to them either way they got it going and uh, played the game and now they plan on playing on a regular basis. So yep. 102 points for the Huskies Boxley by the way with that last foul his fifth he's done he leaves with six points. Uh, one more piece to that local regional puzzle and the game's being played and we'll be in good shape. Well, what are you referring to Francis. Well we saw the the uh, fan poll earlier about the rivalry deal. Yeah. And uh, I know what you're talking it'll, about. It'll happen. Yeah. I, I have a I, I feel good that it, it that it's going to happen. Washington Gonzaga of course is what yeah. I'm referring yeah. to on the on the basketball court. We get that game back in place. Now we've touched all the bases all the lines have been crossed and we'll always have some great regional rivalry games during the basketball season. And that one will probably be at the top of the list. Zags rolling right now. Eight straight wins. And when you take a look at what your favorite Northwest rivalry is, Washington against Washington State, 56% are fan polls question. Central and Western getting some pretty good representation. Like doing better than Oregon against Oregon State. Overton, man, he is just making a living at the uh, line tonight. 15 out of 18 free throws for Vinoy Overton, who has 17 points. Pondexter with the steal. Slow it down a bit. Ryan Ameny. Holiday looked like he was stepping out of it, bounds. It, 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 did he? By like a foot. It did. Holiday. Ryan oh, Ameny oh, over the back of Jones. And that should be that for Matthew Bryan Ammoning. Number five against him. Huskies and Cougars, speaking of rivalries, renew theirs on the hardwood later this week on FSN. On Friday, the Washington women shoot for their 29th straight victory in their series with the Cougars. And on Saturday, Clay Thompson and Washington State take on Quincy Pine, Dexter, and the Dogs from uh, right here at Bank of America Arena. Both matchups right here on FSN and FSN HD. Okay, let's get the Brendan chant going now. I'm so it, he should be out there <laughs> soon. I'm pulling for him. Taylor Olson checking out as Gavin Gilmore checks in. There's Brendan Shear. Walk on, sophomore, 6'9", out of Archbishop Murphy High School. Has not scored this season. And that dog pack is aware of that. 
Well, we talked about that flu bug earlier. They had to put out the call for yeah. the, the walk-ons because they didn't have enough guys to have a full practice. And uh, as a result of that, when everybody got healthy and uh, got back on the court, Brendan was able to stay with the team. And uh, that's a nice reward for coming in yeah. helping the guys out and he's uh, probably having a great experience. I'm sure he wants to get in the game and play a little bit, but hey, he started his started the, the school year just being an ordinary student and now look at him. He's uh, on regional television. Get some free <laughs> get some free travel. <laughs> Go to LA, Tempe, Tucson, Corvallis, right. Eugene, all the stops. The last basket by Quincy Pondexter. Upping his scoring total to 27, and that'll be that as he checks out. And I don't think we're going to see him again, leaving with a double double with those 27 points and 11 rebounds, hitting on nine of 11 shots from the floor, seven of eight at the line. Terrific night. The senior out of Fresno. He's leading 106 63. Garcia with 20 points now to continue to lead the Red Hawks. The only other Red Hawk in double figures, Cervante Burrell with 10. So the 27 ties him with Deion Luton for number nine on the all-time scoring list. In and out is Suggs. Jones with a rebound. Harris ahead to Lever. Jones is a good three-point shooter. Thought about it. Didn't have enough room to launch. Lever will. Gant with the rebound. And Overton on the push. And if you don't stop him, he'll do that and one. Benoit Overton. Great body control, and he's very good at the rim with both hands. Well, this certainly has to be a record for Benoit Overton in terms of free throws attempted and made during a game. He steps to the line, having made 15 of 18. Total of 19 points. Foul against Gilmore. He's done. That's his fifth. Leaves with four points. As Overton looks to complete the three point play. Boxley, Gilmore, Gueff, Broussard have all fouled out of this contest for Seattle U. 109 63. So we approach the five minute mark left to play. Again, the Husky season high 111 points. Little doubt they're going to go well past that in this contest. Burrell, Olsen thought about the three. A little floater. That's Abdul Gaddy like the kind of little runner in that half shot if you will. Good to see T.O. have a little success in his senior season particularly here against Washington. As eight good, points. Good good kid out of Blanchett High School the game I was referring to when he was in high school when I talked about Martel Webster and Spencer Hawes in high school he had a big time game winner to state Seattle prep versus Blanchett. And Taylor Olson had a big time game, 30, 30 plus, and uh, they knocked Seattle Prep out of the playoffs and went to state. And uh, it was a stunner, but he had a huge game that night. Those threes we saw him hit earlier, he was dropping those in from everywhere. That, that game, when you had a team with two future NBA players, two future NBA first rounders coming up short, uh, that was talked about a lot at that time. And and has been ever since. But let's give credit where credit is due. Seattle Prep came back the next year and won the state championship. Overton misfiring from long range. Olsen on the push to Burrell and one for Cervante Burrell. The foul on Abdul Gaddy. That's his third. Well, Burrell's not quite as big and fast. Not quite as big and as quick and fast as Overton, but he does a good job for Seattle. You pushing the ball up the floor also, and you see him finishing strong with the right hand and has a chance for the three-point play. 7 347, let's play. Let's take a look at our Alberto Beef Jerky Alpha plays of the game. Plenty of alleys and plenty of oops tonight, Francis, for the Huskies. As, uh, they have the transition game going. Well, they jumped on Seattle. And plays as yeah, well. Yeah, they jumped out on them early and, and, and really have not let up. Uh, we've seen Holiday get a couple dunks. We saw Pondexter. You see Brian Ammoning getting one there. But uh, just personnel-wise, physically, Seattle, you could not match up. And as Cameron Dollar admitted, his guys were just overwhelmed by this by this atmosphere and, and by this Husky team from the beginning and uh, really, really never had a chance. But to their credit, have continued to fight and scrap. And uh, better days lie ahead for Seattle. That I can, uh, 
I can promise you. Terrell completes the three-point play with 13 points. Suggs for three. Got it. Scott Suggs into double figures with 10. Washington now with six players in double figures and a new season high with 112 points. Jones no good. Holiday with the rebound. Four on three break for the Dogs. Trent. Holiday the trailer inside. That's nice. That's nice. Jump hook. Didn't make the shot, but that was good ball movement. That was good. Wilson in the front court toward the Red Hots as we approach the three minute mark. Left to play here at Bank of America Arena. Burrell. Rebound Holiday. Weaver and Suggs go down, both back up. And Not Weaver him. with the uh, check it, Burrell with the steal, and then the reach out and grabbing foul on Benoit Overton. That is his fifth. And uh, Quincy Pondexter will be joined on the bench by uh, Mr. Overton as we take a look at our U.S. Marines, the leaders of the game. And that guy was outstanding tonight. 27 points, made 9 of 11 field goals. Oh, yeah, 11 rebounds, 7 double double of the season for the senior out of Fresno, number 20. Quincy Pondexter, as you look at career scoring leaders, Louis Nelson, as soon as he gets past uh, Dion Luton in the next game, will be on the hit list. Steve Haas, all within the reach. James Edwards as well of Quincy Pondexter. Reason for him to smile tonight, he and his team putting on a, a terrific show. Roy Overton checking out with 20 points as he committed his fifth foul. Also a career high 86 for Benoit tonight. Turner for three, 115 to 70. Huskies in front. Harris from the corner. He cans three. Peter Harris. They're dropping them in from everywhere, both teams. Harris two for two from beyond the arc. 115-73. Okay, next. Suggs, your turn. Hey. Inside coming out of the pack is Garrett Lever. Burrell, pull up. Rebound by Gaddy. That duel looks long, but decides to just dribble it into front court. Such nice hesitation move. Hangs, and he'll head to the line. Fouled by Harris. He dubs all-time points scored in the game record, 130, 130 against my daughter's future school, Chico State. Is that right? She's not going there to play hoops. Okay. Uh, that was back in uh, December of 93, 130 points. Not going to get there at 115 with 155 left to play. You sure? I, I'm feeling good about that one. <laughs> that one I'm feeling pretty confident about. Three threes, five threes, and they're in there. Harris with that last foul. His fifth. He's gone. Leaves with six points. So Boxley, Gilmore, Harris, Gweth, Broussard all fouling out tonight for Seattle U. Suggs at the line. He's got five for seven at the stripe tonight. He has 11 points. Again, six Huskies in double figures tonight. Well, if we look ahead, Huskies have Washington State coming in yeah. Saturday. Big game. Big game for both of them as they're both coming off the of losses on Saturday. But Washington State was able to get the split down in, in Southern California as SC just collapsed in the second half. And uh, WSU took full advantage of it. Reggie Moore playing great basketball, yeah. playing just outstanding basketball for Washington State. So that's coming up next for the Washington schools. And then uh, Seattle U have three re teams in the region, three teams coming up, Idaho on Saturday and Eastern Washington on Monday, and then at Portland State uh, on Saturday. A lot of road games with this uh, schedule and where they are as a program. By the way, the Husky Cougar game, 12.30 tip-off on Saturday. You can see it right here on FSN as Clay Thompson and Reggie Moore, who Francis referred to, really. I mean, I I would think Reggie's the odds-on favorite right now for Pac-10 Freshman of the Year. I mean, he has been that good. Yeah, he or Derek Williams from Arizona. He's, yeah. Derek Williams has been good, too, but I think just because of the point guard responsibilities yep. that, that uh, Reggie has, 
he would be the favorite to, to win it. So we'll keep it in the state of Washington. To Suggs. And a foul. As uh, Scott tried to get it back to Trent. And here he comes. I was wondering. Brendan. Brendan Shear, the people's choice. Dog pack, loving it. And now the goal will be for this Husky team to get the young man some shots and try to get him his first points of the season. So he checks in. Suggs checks out. 127 left to play. You know, look, these guys, you know, the walk ons, the guys at the end of the bench don't get a lot of uh, publicity or props or playing time for that matter. They work awfully hard. I mean, they are they are grinding, working as hard as anybody in practice. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to have the reward. By the way, Alex Jones fouling out with six points. So that's now uh, six Red Hawks who fouled out of this game. Trent, yeah, nice rotation on the foul shots. 119, 74 Huskies. Well. Shake and bake move nicely done as he goes inside draws a foul on Shearer. And uh, just four players on the court for Seattle. You know. <laughs> yeah props to the truck for pointing it out. They, I mean they've fouled out so many players tonight. Now there is a player who I cannot identify in warm ups on the bench. Sitting at just to the right, uh, Darren Broussard from Broussard's left, our right, as we look across. And uh, that may be Adam Eccles. Possibly. Maybe he doesn't have a jersey on him. I don't know. But it's five against four. I've never seen this firsthand. Take the shot. Sure. Right. Got it. <laughs> In transition, Trent, look out! That's that athleticism we talked about earlier. That's just a glimpse of what you're going to see from that young man going forward for the next three years. 123 76, Garcia. That thing I said about 130, by the way, now, I'm not going to take it back, <laughs> but I think that'll be that. Lorenzo Romar says, "Let's uh, let's just slow it down." Gaddy will dribble some of this clock out. It's about a eight-second differential between game and shot clock. And dog pack uh, just loving it. Abdul Gaddy. On his 18th birthday. And they will just take the shot clock violation. And here it is for Brendan Shear. Textbook. Turns, spaces. Nicely shoots done. with confidence. Finishes, thumb down, Swiss. First basket of the season. And that will be that at Bank of America Arena. Cameron Dollar. Lorenzo Romar embrace. Brendan Shear receiving congratulations. See Coach Dollar going through the Washington line. Guys, obviously, he knows tremendously well. Brendan Shear all smiles.